and 46. <laughs> what do I tell you about formulas? They don't exist. They don't exist. <clears throat> All right, I'd like to think that God chose this psalm. I'd like to think that every week when I pray and ask God for a psalm, he chooses a psalm. I can't tell you for sure, but it's interesting when he gives me a number, and then I look what we're going to speak about. It's very um, much in line. Okay, so there's only 10 verses here. The first verse in this psalm, if you have your Bibles with you, it's, it's called um, an imperative. Any English teachers here? Anybody speak English here? <laughs> Good. So an imperative is, <clears throat> excuse me, something required. Okay? It's, it's, it's an out-and-out out command. That's the first two sentences in the first verse. And then the second sentence is what's called a declarative. Okay? You're announcing something. Okay. So the first line says hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it says praise Adonai, which is, which is the definition of hallelujah. Hallelujah is a Hebrew word, obviously. My soul. So just get the, this is very important for your, your worship experience today. It's very important for your time with God. I would, as your teacher, as your friend, I would tell you to take full advantage of this time that God has set aside for us. Take full advantage of this worship time. And if you see what David is saying here, praise not anoint my soul, because your soul is your decision maker. Your soul is the seat of your emotions. And your soul could be controlled by soulish decisions, feelings. Um, a lot of feelings play, a lot of emotions play into the body of Messiah today. Or your soul can be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And if your soul is controlled by the Holy Spirit, then you're going to walk out what the Holy Spirit asks of you. If your soul is controlled by your emotions, all I can say is good luck. I don't know how to say it any other way. So David is commanding his soul. He's using the Spirit of God to command his soul. He's, he's some, remember, it's an imperative. He's like, look, soul, you're going to... Praise the Lord. You understand me? You don't dictate, soul. The Spirit of God dictates. You follow? Now, that's a, a lot of stuff in just a few words, right? And you see how important it is to, I think, to understand what is being said as opposed to just, you know, praise the Lord. What does that mean? It, well, it means to, I guess, lift him or exalt him. No, not when it says, praise the Lord, O my soul. And you see it all over the Psalms, right? So many psalms. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So it, um, that line has an exclamation point. So I'll, I'll read it again. Hallelujah! <laughs> and then the second, it says, I will. You see what that means? This is his soul responding to the Holy Spirit's command. Got it? This is a beautiful dialogue in two lines between a man and himself. A beautiful dialogue. He's commanding the Holy Spirit to command his soul, and then he's responding. It's like he's saying, soul, and then the soul is saying, I will. You follow? You hear me? Yes, I will. I will respond. That's the response, the second line. It's a lot of stuff in just a couple of lines, right? And I don't, I don't, I'm not doing this to, to, to show you that I know what I'm talking about. I'm not doing it for that reason, really. I'm so sorry if you think that's the case. I'm doing it to get you excited and to, to want you to delve in and get into it and find out more. Because there's gold in these hills. You just got to be willing to spend time digging. You know, you don't find gold right away. It takes time. But precious things take time to find. And when you find them, they have great value. Any of this making sense? Good.
bless you. You're welcome. So he says, I will praise Adonai as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God all my life. And then he realizes the greatness of God by lowering himself and saying, don't put your trust in princes. Don't, or in mortals, mortals, that's, that's us, human beings. It's not saying don't love human beings. It's not saying that we can't have a trusting relationship. But the Bible doesn't say trust the man. It says trust the Lord. And this is what he's trying to get across. Don't trust man 100%. Because if you do, what's going to happen? You're going to be disappointed. Has anybody ever in this room been disappointed by somebody? Okay, let me see the hands for a minute. Is that everybody, or, or, or there's somebody not raising their hand because you're in the womb? <laughs> so that's just about everybody. Now let me ask you a question. Has anybody given somebody else a reason not to trust them? Good. You get it? You can't trust yourself. This is good. Don't trust in princes or in mortals who cannot help. Why? When they breathe their last, they return to the dust. On that very day, all their plans are gone. Man cannot save themselves, let alone save others. I know some of you might have a Messiah complex. I'm going to do everything for everyone. Make sure you're, you're, you're right with God before you start doing everything for everyone. When a man stops breathing, guys, he dies and he's buried because man is mortal and fleeting. And I'm here to tell you, and I mean this wholeheartedly, the best of men, the very best of men are men at best. Make sense? It's not belittling, it's just being honest. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be honest and conduct yourself in a biblical manner. But the bottom line is, the Bible says all men are liars. So welcome today to Beth Liar. (laughs) Happy is he whose help is Jacob's God, meaning the God of Israel, whose hope is in Adonai, his God. David's saying that the way of happiness and help and hope is to rely on God. He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps faith forever. He's saying, look, this is the almighty, all-powerful God that created and sustained the universe. There is no risk in trusting him. Life is a little bit of a crapshoot sometimes, but when you trust the Lord, it's not. He's totally dependable. He secures, now he's giving a, a rundown of how good God is and why. He secures justice for the oppressed. That means he's an advocate for the helpless. He gives food for the hungry. That means he's a provider. Adonai sets prisoners free. That means he's a deliverer. Not just when you're in trouble. He's a deliverer of sin and selfish living. Adonai opens the eyes of the blind physically and spiritually. Adonai lifts up those who are bent over. That means he's an uplifter. Adonai loves the righteous. Guys, make no mistake. God loves those who obey his law. Adonai watches over strangers, talking about the foreigner. He sustains the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked, he twists. He just thwarts their plans. It ends here in verse 10. Adonai will reign forever. The psalmist here is saying that God is the eternal king, always was and always will be. Your God, he's saying your God, he's speaking to the children of God. He's not just declaring this to just anybody, he's declaring it to you. He's saying your God will reign forever. Your God, the God of Israel, through all generations. Hallelujah. The word.
Word of God is very simple, and yet it's very meaty. You know? It's simple enough, really. Like prayer. You could write books on prayer, and yet a three-year-old can pray. So the word, that's, what, that's what's so amazing, guys, to me about the Word of God. It's, it's shallow enough for a little child to wade in, and it's deep enough for an elephant to swim in. Sometimes I read it like a little child, and sometimes I read it like an elephant. I want to get everything out of it. The simple and the intricate, I want to understand it to the best I can, and that just takes time. I'm not a theologian. Furthest thing, I'm the furthest thing from a scholar. You know, guys like Spurgeon and Moody never went to Bible college. But they had a relationship with God like none other. Bible college won't get you intimacy. There's nothing wrong with it. it you know, you learn some things and it looks good in a frame. But that's not what's going to get you intimacy. No. So, today we're here to just worship God and express to Him to the best of our ability how much we love Him. And maybe somehow, some way, we'll leave here a little bit more like Yeshua. Wouldn't that be nice? But in order to get more of him, you've got to lose some of you. So, you willing to lose a little weight today? No, I'm not going to go over a 40-day plan on how to get them. <laughs> We've all tried that, haven't we? <laughs> no. No, I'm talking about losing some spiritual weight that's not of God. That's the idea. Hopefully that will happen. So allow me to pray. Father, thank you so very much for being the great God and Father that you are. Um, Thank you so much for constantly, constantly dealing with your children as problematic and as difficult and as confused as we can be. Thank you for loving us in spite of it all. And I hope and pray that you are pleased today. I hope that you have a good time. I hope you enjoy your time with us. And I hope you manifest your presence with us here today. We'd um, really be honored to have your presence here today. It would be uh, wonderful. And I know if you show up, things will change. So change our hearts to be more like your son. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Shabbat shalom.